the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Welcome everyone. This is the weekly TSC call. As you probably all know, <laughs> this is a publicly uh, this is a public event. Anybody is welcome to join and contribute. Uh, there is a couple of uh, requirements. You should be aware of the antitrust policy, the notice of which is displayed on the screen. If you're online, if you're on the phone, uh, just make sure you check it out. It's linked from the agenda or embedded into the agenda, I believe. And the other piece is the code of conduct which essentially says that you need to behave like a decent human being. So um, just do that and you're welcome to keep uh, calling in and joining the call and participating positively, hopefully. Okay, so there is a whole bunch of quarterly reports the first one of which is Transact. It was actually already on the agenda like two weeks ago, but I put it back because there was actually a comment raised by Mark on the agenda, on the report, sorry, um, asking for some details about the, and it wasn't responded to. So I, we don't need to do this now, but uh, I would think it would be good um, if this could be addressed. I don't think there's anything else. I just wanted to bring that one up to highlight the comment that has been left unanswered. Other than that, the other four reports are new this week. And I mean, we have a we have greater number because obviously we didn't have a call last week. So it kind of all piled up. But uh, I didn't see going through all the reports. Uh, I didn't see anybody raising any issues for the TSC to discuss. So uh, to expedite, I'm not going to go through every one of them individually, but I will ask globally if anybody has anything to say about the reports or to ask about the reports, any of them. So the one that I had a question on was Quilt. I don't know if it ever got answered. I haven't checked my email today, but there's a, a security audit being performed. Is it the one? Is it being done uh, through yes. Hyperledger, or is it being done uh, on their own? It's okay. not me. Okay. It's not us. Yes. Okay, that's what I was assuming from reading the report. But so David confirm confirms that. Yeah, hey, this is David. Yeah, it's a it's a third party that uh, Ripple hired. Okay, thanks, David. In future, is there like, is is there a recommended path to go through Hyperledger? I, I guess I wasn't aware that Hyperledger would would also be doing independent security audits, or is it more a coordination thing? I can answer that. Um, it's just that we have resources available. We part of our budget is dedicated to doing that for. Uh, major promoter releases. So um, it's mostly just if you want that done and don't have the resources to do it, you know, um, we can do it for you, right? So we've done Fabric and Bezu and Aroha and Sawtooth and Ursa. Several. Ursa. Well, not yet. Ursa, not yet. Okay. But um, okay. yeah, that so the short answer is yes. We have done it. There's no rule you have to, I guess. Okay, I think good. It's, it's, it's good to know. And it's obviously a good thing to coordinate with um, <clears throat> uh, Dave Shusby to uh, ensure like all of the CVEs and those sorts of things are tracked through him. Uh, I would assume, right, Dave? That's correct. Yeah, we, we have an actual like security apparatus. We have a security team and we have SLAs that we try to to hold up, you know, meet. So, yeah, we can talk about this later, offline. Yeah. Um, how about after that report comes in, I'll, I'll set some time up with you and share it with you, and we can kind of see how that should be. If, if there's anything that's found, we can see how they should be handled. Sure. Perfect. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. 
Anything else? Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, I guess we can uh, move forward with the agenda. So in terms of decisions, so I mean the upcoming reports I'm skipping through, obviously there's a page there, you can just look it up, see what's coming. Just keep an eye for the ones that you own or you're responsible for. Um, uh, when it comes to decisions, so we have one more issue that is uh, TSC election related that uh, we need to dispose of. And um, the origin of this was that there was, you know, as part of the discussions, we had this idea that, oh, maybe, you know, we should have observers. These are people who are not part of the staff, but could do essentially help the, um, that was the premise of this. It could help the, they could help the, the staff. But um, I have noticed two things. Uh, first, the staff is telling me, we don't really need that kind of help, thank you. Uh, but, um, and the other aspect, and that actually was pretty apparent last week at the uh, Hyperledger Global Forum, I have to say, where this issue was, <laughs> came up several times. This actually, I think, is interpreted in a fairly negative way towards the staff, as if the staff cannot be trusted, and so we need to have some kind of other party looking over their shoulder, making sure they're not fooling around with the whole election process, which I'm, I'm really sure this was not the intent, but I can see how this can be read that way. And so at the end of the day, I find myself wondering, do we even need this at all? And I decided, no, we don't. So I am actually putting it before the TSC to vote on with, quite frankly, the uh, expectation that we would kill this, as the agenda says. So we would vote against it. And I'm happy to hear from anyone before we go there. And I can tell you, Mark is not here today, but I actually had the chance to talk to him about it last uh, week when we were at the Global Forum. And uh, because I know he was part of the people bringing it up in the first place, and he said he was totally fine with this. He did say it would be good to clarify that uh, anybody who is candidate and so taking part in the election should not have anything to do with the election process so that there is no risk of conflict of interest. And he said, that being said, he was fine with killing this proposal and basically saying we won't have any observers. So. Hey, hey, this is uh, Brian, by the way, um, and I'll take the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the fault. Uh, I, I believe I was the one who suggested it first. Um, I might be mistaken, but I, I re recall suggesting it based on the fact that we, that that role exists over at the Hyperlit, I'm sorry, at the Apache Software Foundation. Um, there are individuals who serve as election observers. Um, uh, and so I, I, I would not, <laughs> do not intend to ding my own staff uh, on that so much as um, respond to you know, I think in the in the in the last election cycle, there was a sense of distance, um, uh, perhaps more perception than reality uh, between um, what the staff was doing in, in kind of filtering the list and that sort of thing, and the TSC. And so it was an attempt to try to close that gap. Um, and if the TSC feels it's not needed, that's great. I just want to make sure that it, you know. And we, I think we've done a lot better this cycle, just in clearing out a lot of important issues ahead of time and others. But just like in the run-up to and uh, as we're filtering out email addresses for voters and in the final election that, that we keep the, uh, um, the TSC and the, um, the staff close on how the election's being run. All right, thanks. Any other comments or questions? My question to you is, do you want a roll call vote? Well, I... Uh, well, I mean, yeah, number I one, it hasn't been, you haven't called for vote. It hasn't been seconded. And <laughs> I second it. <laughs> okay. Well, have a... Oh, you want to vote. Okay. That's fine. Uh, Angela's not here. Or no. Uh, no. Meaning mm -hmm. I want to kill this. Okay. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> yes, we have no bananas. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, Dan. <laughs> no. Gary. 
No. No. Heart. Nope. Uh, Nathan. Epstein. Sweda. No. Tracy. I'm not sure I'm eligible to vote, but if I am, it's a no. <laughs> uh, I, I missed a meeting two weeks ago, so I'm not sure if that. I think you have to miss more than two in a row. Oh, is it right. two? In a row? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, you're you're not in the penalty box yet, but Troy is actually. <laughs> oh, Troy no, is. But Troy's here. Yeah, but oh, who's here? Oh, but he loses voting rights for the first uh, his first time back. He's yeah, get but out he doesn't count towards quorum. So, Troy, yeah. if you want to say what you want to, you can. But I think the the motion is dead. Why is he? <laughs> All right. The motion uh, okay. succeeds in failure. There we go. All right. <laughs> Thank you. So, so Arno, is it is it true? Is it true your statement that this was the last lingering item on TSC elections? Yes. <clears throat> Until somebody yeah. raises a new one, at least, so you know. Oh, don't, don't give anybody any ideas. Don't jinx us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> three minutes before somebody raises one. So. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm happy this is done, and it also means that there is no bo no more blocking issues for the TSC election, and uh, the staff should be able to implement the plan as we have uh, laid out. So I think it's all goodness. All right, so. Oh, I, should, so I, should start my cam I should start my campaign now, Arno? All right, I, we're, we're good to go. <laughs> no, so <laughs> for those who don't remember, the, the, the actual schedule and everything will be communicated beforehand and the election doesn't happen until the fall. So there is plenty of time, don't, uh, don't get all excited yet. And for non-native English speakers, I just want to clarify, we're not killing the election observers themselves. We're just killing the concept <laughs> of election observers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thankfully. Okay. okay, so I have two, uh, there's two other agenda items. In fact, the first one is a mistake. And uh, you know, Dan added this thinking we had uh, lost track of an item which has to do with the governing doc. But I want to reassure him as I put in comment to this um, the, uh, I, I actually discussed this with Brian and he's here, he can confirm that, you know, we had this idea that Silona was actually on the hook to come up to the TSC with a proposal to create a task force to decide how we would handle this. And, uh, he said they would actually act on this. So I'm expect the ball is in uh, Brian's camp and uh, expect him to come back to us with the proposal or have somebody assigned to do those. Okay. Um, and uh, I mean, maybe we can talk about it here just quickly. Is there um, a consensus that we want to move governing docs into a Git repo um, and version them there and, and have that be kind of the single source of truth, um, uh, perhaps away from the wiki? Um, or can we continue to use the wiki uh, and you know, monitor the space and 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 that sort of thing. I, the Cloud Native Compute Foundation does use Git as their repo. Um, uh, just some guidance, one way or the other, and then you know, between the community architecture team, we'll just jump in and do that. So I'm happy for this to be discussed now. If we can get quickly to some resolution, but when we tried this before. We completely were all over the map, and that's why we say, okay, let's take that offline. Let's have a task force look at uh, whether the options come with a recommendation. So you're putting it back for discussion at TSC. Let's see how it goes. I yeah. would rather do the task force, but. Okay, so so I, I'm, I'm in favor of it going into a Git repo, and uh, the TSC members for that that uh, year or annum is, are the maintainers for that repo. And that way things explicitly get approved uh, by the TSC members and it's under version control. Yeah, and, and so, so I, I, my counter proposal, it, right, uh, is very much along Dan's lines is, you know, rather than a task force to look at the issue, 
Um, you know, I, 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 if, if there's, unless there's strong sentiment against um, using Git as the place to version and consider the single source of truth for governance docs and, and process documents, uh, I, you know, I think, I think there's good argument for going forward with it. So, so um, my counter proposal is, uh, is to do that. I don't think it needs a, a TSC role vote, but, but certainly supported by a consensus of the, of, the, of the conversation here. And then we can just get started on that. So for the record, I'm fine with that. I'm happy to move Me to. Too. I think there are some issues like, okay, what does it mean for the issues? Do we use GitHub issues? Do we use, still use the decision log with the wiki? I don't know. Let's, let's continue to use the decision log in the wiki. Um, uh, I think the important thing is uh, make, making sure that those, as decisions are reached that have implications for the governance docs, that there's like a corresponding pull request, <laughs> you know, uh, that that uh, can be pointed to, so that we know um, when we're approving a decision, a decision log, you know, what that correlates to, and in, in in which pull request and which change. I'm good with that. Yeah, this sounds good. Can we also just make sure there is actually a single source of truth? Right now, some of our documents are contradictory, uh, and we may need to to streamline them. You know, we just can't take what we have and currently dump it in Git. So that that's part of the plan, right? Is to create one document that has all these pieces together. And then I would hope that we retire all the pieces that are on the wiki that might conflict with whatever comes out of this process. Yeah, I think I think that makes sense. And I think we can bootstrap it with an initial series of pull requests that um, uh, well, we'll create the TSC repo uh, and, you know, have the, the, the TSC as, um, uh, you know, kind of developers on that, that repo, committers on that repo, and then just start issuing pull requests. And as those pull requests get accepted, then decommission the related wiki page. Okay, anybody objecting to this course of action? <clears throat> no, I, but I, I, I like the idea that Brian was suggesting of, you know, ensuring that there's a pull request associated with a decision log um, decision, um, at least one that's, you know, requires some modification. Uh, obviously, it wouldn't apply if we killed something, whatever. <laughs> but um, uh I think then that sort of means that the decision is tied to a pull request, not that we're expecting one to come after or whatever. That way we're sure that we're cleaning up any loose ends to address Hart's point. Yeah, at steady state, you know, a decision in the decision log would have in its description, here's a corresponding pull request. Um, right, but, and that's what we're reviewing as a resolution, I guess. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. So for your for the sort of initial commit, I think there is an idea back when this first started that the task force would need to be uh, pulling together these disparate sources and there might need to be a little bit of uh, pre-organization. So we probably don't need to, to get into the details of that, but just as a reminder that uh, that was an observation earlier. Right. I think, I think, let me talk with uh, the other community architects about this, but I think what we can do is um, get an initial commit kind of teed up that tries to cover, you know, most of what's, what we can say the governance docs. Um, and, uh, uh, and then, you know, put it up and then we can talk about that here at the TSC, uh, you know, when it, when it's ready. And, and, uh, and if it looks good, you know, accept it and then accept a series of, of, you know, improvements after that until we think we've, we've, we're complete. But I think we can be edited and, and I think the CA can drive it. The, the only other thing that I would maybe ask or, um, you know, maybe somebody can explore this would be if we can take the commit and turn that into a GitHub action that actually updates the wiki so that we have everything in the wiki as opposed to scattered all over the place. Um, yeah, that's an interesting to, idea. How to update the wiki. Dave, do you know? Um, I believe there is a programmable API uh, for Confluence. So in theory, we could write a script that does it. 
Yeah, we just have to make sure those pages aren't editable through the wiki. Sounds like a good uh, feature request. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So can't guarantee exactly. that that works as anticipated, but certainly there'll be links from. Well, it, yeah, I'm I'm just suggesting that we try to have the the governance all sort of from the wiki as opposed to different places. That's all. Right. Have everything be pulled downstream from. Yeah, from the repo. From the, yeah. from the repo itself. Yes. Plus yeah. one thousand. I totally agree with automation. All right, let's leave it at this for now. This is something the staff can look into, see if it's possible at all and what it would take. I think we've made some progress, so let's leave it at this for today and let's move on. Fair enough. So the other item we have for discussion is the uh, long-term agenda that uh, Dan uh, put up to, uh, uh, for discussion last week, or the week before, I should say, the last call. And uh, I actually was not able to attend, as you guys know, and I did listen to the recording, and clearly there wasn't much time left on the call to get, it, to get a real discussion going on. But um, uh, I just wanted to get back to it and see whether we could make any progress. I have to say, even though there wasn't much time on the call, it didn't seem like people jumping in to share ideas or comments. So I don't know if it was, you know, I don't know if that was representative of how people feel, but uh, I'm happy to give everybody a chance to talk. We have half an hour left, so let's take advantage of this. Dan, do you want to say something about it to reintroduce this? Yeah, sure. Started. Yeah, so uh, like you said, at the end of the, the last TSC meeting, we just had a couple minutes, so we just introduced the topic there, and I hope people had some opportunity to think during Global Forum, whether you were there or not, uh, and reflect on this. Uh, there's a couple of framing points in here, uh, one of which was, hey, we originally spun a lot of these technical discussions out of the TSC intentionally, and now that the TSC is hungry to get back into some of these technical discussions, and coincidentally, the, the working groups have moved away from deliverables, it might be a good time for us to uh, reincorporate that scope back into the TSC and also try to reincorporate those participants. So one of the first notions here is, can we encourage What's, what's the appetite for encouraging the architecture working group participants and uh, agenda to come back into the TSC? So I know we've got um, also linked below is a, a note that the architecture working group put together after their meeting when, when this topic was introduced. Uh, and there's also a comment below from, from Mick as well. So I think that's probably the, the first point of discussion is what do people think about um, bringing some of these working group discussions back into the TSC? And Hart, I know you sit uh, astride a couple of these groups, so uh, we can get the ball rolling with what your take is on whether it would be constructive to bring those discussions back over. Uh, sure. I actually missed the architecture working group meeting uh, where they created that document. Uh, so I can't speak for everyone there, uh, but I guess the question was um, a lot of people thought sort of some kind of ideal long-term solution was a sort of modular convergence that we'd talked about for many years. Uh, and the question was, how do we get there? Uh, so, so that's what most of the discussion was about. Um, and I guess the architecture working group participants were interested about what the TSC members thought about something like this and if there was anything we could do to bring some of the project, some or all of the projects together. Okay, so that's a good example of a topic that came out of that group that we could bring into this session. Do you think that the working group participants are interested in, in having that discussion in this forum? Um, sure, yeah. I think they would probably be happy to do so. 
Okay. So uh, go ahead. Dan, Dan, it's Mike. Just could you, um, the, the discussion right now is very um, esoteric and philosophical. Could you be a little more, um, bring it back down. When, when you imagine how this works, how do you see it working? I guess I'm having a hard time understanding what the question really is. Uh, so the, the architecture working group had an agenda and I'm not up to speed with where the agenda is now. Um, but at some point, some of those agenda topics were things like what, what Hart had just related. Uh, and so we were having those discussions outside of the TSC and there wasn't good, I don't know, I, I don't think there was good synergy between the two groups. And so I'm looking for a way to bring those discussions back in. So where there were architectural discussions about how do you, uh, what would be components of a converged architecture. Um, uh, maybe you could fill me in with, with some of the other uh, agenda items that, that could be relevant here, but that's, that's sort of the, the, I don't know, the, the concrete thing is bring the agenda items in and then we don't have an, uh, it helps solve the absence of topics that are technical that otherwise get filled in with, with some sort of bureaucratic minutia. So historically the architecture working group and has been much more focused on sort of descriptive, right? Sort of, uh, represent or describe what the common features are of the existing platform. Uh, and the, the, are, are you suggesting a more prescriptive nature in those, in that dialogue or, um, or is this just a, there's a bunch of interesting topics for discussion and we could go down through uh, how to make chain code unify, how to do interoperability across blockchains, how to do identity. I mean, there's a bunch of those topics, obviously, that, that could be brought in to, to discuss, but I'm still, try, I'm still trying to sort of get my head wrapped around what it is, what you want to pull out of us and how can we support you? So I'm game for a pretty wide array of those. Um, I think that we get to prescriptive after having some of the descriptive conversations. And I think that to get to that point, we, we need to sort of prime the pump with, with some technical discussions. If we take an example, right, uh, of what the Architecture Working Group has already done, they've done a white paper on consensus and describing what consensus is. They've done a white paper on um, somebody's dog wants to talk to me as well. Uh, they've done a, a white paper on smart contracts as well, right? And those have both been descriptive. So I guess the question that I assume Mick is asking here is, now that those descriptive white papers are done, are we suggesting that the TSC is going to be prescriptive about how consensus should work across all of the platforms and how smart contracts should work across all of the platforms? Hey, this is Brian. I think I think Dan's for, you know example questions are are um, a pretty good place to start. You know they're kind of asking at a, at a top down view, which is you know what the what I think the TSC should be thinking about. Like you know I really like the question things like gaps in our portfolio, um, ways to be working more closely with each other, um, uh, and then I think leaving it to the working groups. You know when, once you set kind of a, 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 a strategy or a picture. Um, uh, which those questions I think can either lead to or, or uh, answer as a hyperledger wide kind of kind of concept, then you know the the you know actually manifesting that turning that into something real is something that you could you know, you, you know um, delegate out to the working groups for further detail. Um, the TC, TSC is not a great place to sort out details on these things. You know certainly not at the depth of 
you know, recommending certain consensus mechanisms over another. Um, and I think it is still important to leave road mapping to the individual projects, but to highlight priorities and to try to certainly want, you know, uh, raise the level of commonality across our projects, um, I think would be, would be a pretty useful thing for the TSC to, to be doing. Um, uh, but working with the working group structure so that, um, you know, the, the, the details can be sorted out uh, in smaller groups. Could be um, that, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, a strategy document you know, or, or some sort of kind of, you know, sense of the, of the TSC on where it should spend the rest of 2020. Right. Um, what would be good to be ending 2020 with, you know, uh, across our projects or new projects in here that aren't in here, those those sorts of things. Yeah. And. Uh, I'd like to the TC on thoughts about, you know, it can be specifically about incorporating the, the working groups or it could be a reaction to those starter questions that are listed in the issue. Um, but uh, so we, we haven't heard from Troy very much uh, on, yet on this call. We were having a little fun with, with you having missed a couple sessions. So maybe I'll, I'll put you in a more positive seat here to, to give us some reflection on how you think we can drive a more technical agenda here. Yeah, I'll have to give that a little bit more thought, I think. I, I think that is very important, actually, but I will have to think about how we could actually do it. By the way, thank you, Mick, for enabling the conversation, the architecture working group reporting back, because I thought that uh, the report was very useful, very informative. Likewise. Anything for you and, and Arno and Dan. Just, you guys are awesome. So just ask. <laughs> so I just wanted to react to one thing that uh, Brian just said. I mean, Brian, you, you I, I feel like this question in general is a hard one. And, and the architecture group, I mean, Mick has been lamenting for years um, the fact that, you know, the architecture working group and the TSE, more generally speaking, does do not have teeth and and you know we're talking about having prescriptive uh, action here which in itself is a challenge but you put on top of it the notion of a deadline which i find even more challenging i you know at this point i'd be happy to have some kind of long-term plan without even trying to nail down a date like the by the end of 2020 this is where we should be I mean, I know you like to set uh, challenging. I just think, you know, goals. whenever one's talking about scope, uh, time is one of the first things to try to address in that scope, right? Yeah. Um, but I don't mean to over constrain the conversation at this point. Apologies for that. Yeah, I I do like though the the idea that sometimes in in trying to set out some objectives, that's what stimulates some of the actual work so if we could say at the end of this tsc term which is probably too soon but say that by the end of 2020 we would have liked to have a certain list of accomplishments uh, and maybe coming up with what those are is one way that we could do that framing and, and start driving how we go about that whether it's directly with the working groups or some other mechanism um, sort of a a slightly different way to look at that is that might be a good thought exercise for next time is if we were going to draw a new greenhouse what structure would it have would you put some new rooms in that green greenhouse does the tools box need to be larger um and then tying that back to prescriptive action i don't foresee us ever saying hey fabric you need to explicitly in integrate with ursa or transact 
uh, that feels like not the right kind of open source process. But what we could do to be still prescriptive is draw out that green, greenhouse that has a new box in it. And that helps focus the community on saying, um, here's a kind of project that helps fill out that, that box. Otherwise, what's historically happened is, is we just get uh, a more react, more, we're less proactive in how we build out the portfolio and it's more reactive to whatever the is, is offered up by people in the community. So Dan, can I just jump in and just make one suggestion on this, which is um, it's, it's really nice to talk about common uh, modules and tools. And, and if you look at the greenhouse right now, that's not how it works. Um, you know, we have, we have tools and libraries, um, but those tools and libraries are really part of um, the, okay, I don't want to use the word sub project, but, but they're really closely connected with and have, and have parents that way. How do we motivate um, more long-term thinking in the projects rather than release by release thinking? Because if we don't, if we don't motivate to build things that work cross product, then whatever discussions we have about cross platform are irrelevant. So it seems to me like one of the first things that needs to be queued up is um, how do we how do we build out that community of people um, who are thinking less about release to release and more about generation to generation. And by the way, that's not an easy problem. That, uh, that's not my point. But, but I think if we don't do that, then the rest of these discussions are just, you know, blowing hot air. But the, I think the real, the interesting part of your question, Mick, is, and I don't mean it to sound this way, but, but what's the, the only word I can think of is, what's the incentive or rationale for someone to do that? Yeah, I and that's one thing that I meant to imply with one of those starter questions, which is what's what's the maintenance overhead in some of these projects. So it's it's for example not worth um, Ledger X's time to rewrite their signature API just to include uh, Ursa for the sake of including Ursa. It has to be either here's a new feature that's provided by Ursa, so now it warrants developer time to integrate it, or it's such a pain in the neck for me to be constantly managing these, these other independent libraries that it is now a lower cost uh, to make use of Ursa or, or one of our other libraries. <clears throat> if, if so, we, if the, yeah, go ahead. Well, so I was gonna suggest, so, it feels awkward to me to have this be a PSC conversation when really what we're talking about is having the various maintainers of the various projects making these kinds of discussion, you know, having these kinds of discussions and making such decisions amongst themselves. And what we should be focusing on is maybe sort of just sort of suggesting uh, a vision of where we think we'd like to see the community try to get to um, and approaches for how we might encourage that kind of um, cross project collaboration rather than being ex you know specific about you know do x and y or whatever and <clears throat> i say that because i think at the end of the day you know there are some things that are happening sort of somewhat naturally between some of the projects. And what we ought to do is figure out how do we encourage more of that rather than trying to be prescriptive about what we think, you know, whose chocolate should be in whatever is peanut butter. Um, <clears throat> um, but rather to highlight where the co collaboration is occurring and trying to reinforce more of that behavior. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah I I think well put. That, that, that makes sense, but if I maybe you know, and I know Dan, I forgot to get, I didn't get back to you on this one, but I think if I if I read into some of like, oh maybe I'll, I'll just speak for myself, right? I guess 
That makes sense, though, Chris, but I think part of the thing is, okay, so think about the name of our group, of this, of this group that we are members of. It's called the Technical Steering Committee. And I'll just restate what I think Dan would have said earlier. We don't actually do anything technical. Yeah, you keep saying this, but when we say, okay, what else do you want to talk about? There's silence for the most part. Well, I know, but the question is, like, what would people, you know? Yeah, I think this is an attempt you to. Know, so I, I guess that's where that. I'm going back to where, where Dan was sort of going at, right? Is, you know, do we want, you know, it's, and, and, and the onus is on to us, right? I, I think it's not always going to be every membership of a, of a TSC is going to always do the same thing. I guess maybe what you're saying, but what would be interesting if people wanted to do something, you know, technical? Do we want to have a set of problems that we would want to solve? I mean, as leaders that are in here. Um, do we want to take a stab at, are we allowed, I mean, we're allowed to do anything, I think, but writing some specter of something, right? I, I don't know, you know, or so is it that we're really not a technical steering committee? I, I guess maybe that's the broader question. Okay, so I suspect people have different expectations of what the steering committee, the technical steering committee is supposed to be doing anyway. But I think the nature of the way Hyperledra has grown into this uh, greenhouse with multiple projects that, you know, makes it that people don't have expertise across the board. It makes having deep technical discussions difficult anyway. But I think I wanted to follow up on what Chris was saying because I agree that, you know, Pretending that we can have prescriptive action, I think, is a bit of a stretch. I think we can have recommendations, but at the end of the day, the projects are open source projects. They are based on voluntary participation. We literally cannot force anybody to do anything. We have to convince them that somehow it's in their interest that they will feel compelled to do it. But we can do that. And so far, we haven't really done that. We have said, hey, we, we would like to see more collaboration. And I think what we are touching on here is this idea of going beyond just a general statement saying, yeah, cross-pollination integration between the project would be good, and to trying to identify specific areas where maybe we could have this kind of you know, enable integration or cooperation between different projects. And I think if if we can articulate what those points uh, are, what those and 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 motivated, because as it was said, I mean, unless you give a rationale for doing this, and people don't see any benefit, they just won't do it. But I think there's there's some interesting work that can be done there that is fairly high level. You know, it may not be as technical as some would like, Gary included, but still more technical than talking about elections. <laughs> and, and high level that everybody can participate in trying to, you know, set some general technical direction that we can communicate across all the different projects moving forward. Hey, this is Brian, and and I know I not being a TSC member, generally speaking, we the staff should should take a back seat to this stuff and and let you talk. But um, some thoughts that occur to me: there's um, two dimensions in my mind. There's um, reactive and prescriptive, uh, uh, and then there's um, I, I, I carrots and sticks. Um, so uh, the term steering. I mean, another project's often that instead of calling it a technical steering committee, it's called a technical oversight committee. Um, and and the word steering might be something that we're struggling with because the metaphor of you know a single driver with uh, his or her hands on a wheel, <laughs> setting a precise direction forward is really not what's possible in any community like ours, right? No matter how much code we're overseeing, even if it was just one project. Um, Generally speaking, what uh, a body like this has is carrots in the form of here's something cool that we should all aim towards or or help you know guide people towards that that is showing promise is bearing fruit and maybe at a certain point it becomes clear here's a an architecture approach a way to do interoperability whatever that that really now has proven itself and maybe it should start to be um, the standard or at least everybody aware of it right and and you know 
we think about how to do X, we think about that together. Um, uh, a stick is, you know, you must do this. And we do have sticks today in the project, you know, in the form of things like using the DCOs, um, uh, using GitHub, uh, you know, following other sorts of processes. And Did we lose Brian? I did lost I lose Brian or did he lose Brian? Okay. I think, I think Brian we collectively lost call. Brian. We lost okay. <laughs> so I just I just wanted to sort of um, chime in on the, the, the whole TSC thing and I would encourage people to actually read the description of what the TSC is about. It was never going to be about specifically setting direction for the project. I think it maybe is a project, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> it was really more about the, you know, sort of dealing with the sort of um, uh, the, the 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 white space in between the various projects in the sense of, con you know, the the continuous integration environment and, you know, where there may be some uh, integrations or what have you. And if there are any technical disputes that you could bring it to the TSC to get it resolved. But basically we were, the, the whole point was to let the projects be projects, right? Let them run their own uh, decision-making and not do it for them. So, you know, maybe it's misnamed, I don't know, you know, but um, it was never really intended to be some sort of high level director of where this is all heading. But it was to, you know, help, you know, figure out who gets to be incubated and whenever. That, that part is still our job. Yeah, so some other yeah, kinds I, of steering that, that we sense. can do. Yeah, so, so some of the steering that we can do are, do we create spaces for the right kind of projects to, to happen? So if we create another opening on that, greenhouse do we create the space for uh, a couple projects to move together into that space do we set up uh, more collaborative opportunities like the maintainer summits or hack fests uh, that create that opportunity so there's steering that we can do that doesn't mean being explicitly telling one project to do something which we're never going to do Uh, so, so Troy here. So I posted, I guess, my my rough thoughts on the uh, chat channel, but uh, it, it's just tricky because where where do you do these cross project projects if that's not the focus or the current goal of uh, uh, of maybe maybe a particular project, right? Not not to call anybody out, but um, everybody has their current priorities, and there's not a space to do these cross project projects. Um, I don't know if that will ever um, happen inside the greenhouse or it just happens organically outside. Um, I think that's those are good conversations labs, to have. I think that's what labs was intended to be, was a place yeah, to do these I, sorts of experiments. I, I guess my, my point problem with that is these aren't considered experiments and the lab label really shouldn't apply. So, so I, I hear that with experiments, but if you're doing cross project, um, efforts. It's just it's just hard to call that a lab. You might as well just build it in your own repos. Uh, that's just my opinion, of course. But yeah, well, thanks for offering that up, Troy. You're as one of the the newer voices here. I, I find it really helpful to hear uh, your take on these things. Uh, I think the the labs can be a place where we do cross project things. Uh, that's worked out a little bit for for some things like uh, Ursa um, but we also don't need to focus exclusively in this technical direction on cross project that's been a big theme for us for the last year or two how do we get some convergence or, or more, more cross project activity um, there's also other avenues that we could be steering so one of those other open questions there is, you know, what are we missing in this greenhouse? 
is it missing some other kind of, uh, I was gonna make some, some sort of a greenhouse metaphor, but I, I, it turns out I don't really know much about greenhouses. So, um, <laughs> you know, is there some other category that we're missing there? But, but I, think, I think Troy's point is something that we should be thinking about, right? If, if labs is not a good place to do these sorts of experiments or it's hard to do them there, um, then, then labs isn't meeting its goal. Right, and so that seems something that we should probably discuss and try and figure out what the right space is for the sort of work that Troy is suggesting can't be done in labs or is hard to be done in labs. Well, I mean, maybe, you know, it occurs to me, I mean, one of the problems uh, has been reported to me that maybe we should do a better job at, uh, you know, helping people figure out what labs are there because we have a lot of them now and it's kind of getting complicated to see what's there and, you know, find, figuring out what each lab is about. And But one thing, I mean, I think it can make a difference is whether, you know, we could have some kind of like TSC, uh, uh, um, how do you call that, like a, a highlight of some labs that we are specifically interested in or that I think, you know, would help with the greenhouse, as Dan suggests, like fill in some gap that we perceive and maybe, you know, kind of advertise them to facilitate more conversation or have more people join in. Well, and this is Nathan. This is where I think I've been struggling to articulate kind of where we're trying to go with this because I mean, the technical steering committee ideally represents leadership amongst the maintainers of the projects. And, you know, when we talk about steering the project as a technical steering committee, part of what we're talking about is how we effectively are advocates and evangelists for each other across the different subsets of maintainers, right? Um, and, you know, I think when we talk about maybe labs isn't the right place, we're, we're not trying to say that labs isn't a good place for lots of things. What we're trying to say is that when we need to advocate for something across the maintainers for, say, Aries and fabric or sawtooth or quilt or whatever it happens to be, we need to be able to engage that maintainer community in a more holistic way and have a discussion at the TSC level about what the right place for things are and how do we help those teams and facilitate those teams working those issues out. And often when we've, we've tried to address those kinds of issues, we haven't been very successful at getting the actual code developers and maintainers to engage. Um, and we need to figure out how to set a, a vision of what the TSC is trying to accomplish so that the maintainers know what to pay attention to. And when we say this is a good idea, we actually end up with a resulting conversation that, that makes sense in terms of things that we can, um, that are actionable, right? And so that the maintainers don't just say, oh, well, yeah, the TSC talks about stuff a lot. But instead they go, oh yeah, I see how that's a good idea. I'm going to go try something. You know, there might be something to uh, also maybe that we could do off of that too, Nathan, which is, I think you said, you know, maintainers obviously are kind of who are people who are steering directions of the individual projects themselves. Um, there's a, you know, an interesting twist to that would be, you know, one thing that, I don't know if it would help, but, you know, one thing that I think everybody struggles with, I mean, the answer of why on most things is pretty simple. There's always one core group of people, let's face it, that are developing each one of these projects. Basically, whoever submitted it in the first place. Yeah, we have community contributions, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, maybe an interesting note could be, maybe that's something that we could, you know, say, hey, look, community, <laughs> if you're interested in like contributing, here's actually a concrete set of things that aren't just like, you know, fixing bugs or whatever but we want to, we've decided that we like X, Y, Z out of whatever areas or whatever it may be. How about, you know, figure, you know, integrating them into the existing projects. Like maybe you can get, maybe we could actually find a way to say, this is something we recommend doing. We currently don't have, you know, capacity or whatever to do it, but if, are there, are there people out there that see interest in this as a use case? And if so, you know, we, maybe we can help guide you on how, how to implement it, even if we don't have the, you know, the, the time to actually code it ourselves. So maybe it's a way of getting more contributors. I don't know if that would work, but it's a thought to tie the get together. All right. 
We're getting close to the end here. Any last comments? Uh, so I'd like to ask uh, people generally, uh, specifically on the TSC, but generally to, to go into that issue and maybe propose some additional leading questions uh, and try to carry this conversation forward over the coming week. Uh, I've also invited uh, one, of the, one of the talks that I listened to at Global Forum. They, uh, they sort of went right into some observations that they had on, on things that they thought would be good in the portfolio. Uh, so I've invited them to come and present next week. And um, uh, so we'll, we'll have some, some contributors from the community to, to help us with this conversation uh, next week as well. All right, good advice. Okay, so with that being said, I think I'm going to try and close this call. I did want to point out uh, for those who have seen at some point on the uh, on the agenda, there was a pointer to the Solang proposal, project proposal. Uh, it was uh, later taken out of the agenda, the reason being that uh, the proposal was withdrawn. And uh, I just wanted to explain a little bit for those who may wonder what happened, um, I had the pleasure to meet uh, Shen Yang last week in, at the Global Forum, along with, I think he met quite a few people. There were a lot of discussions, and uh, uh, invariably, pretty much, I think the feedback he got was there would be a challenge to create a project with so few uh, contributors. And so, based on, you know, you got the sense that the TSC was not really supportive of creating the project at this point. And so he decided to withdraw the proposal and uh, keep working in the lab. And uh, hopefully he can get the community around it. And uh, hopefully this, you know, if nothing else out of this, you know, the proposal that was made, it has already increased uh, some, expo given it more exposure, increased visibility, and uh, maybe that will draw you know, more attention and hopefully contributors to it. But so that's why it was briefly on the agenda and then taken out, so. All right, with that being said, I'm gonna close the call. Thank you all for joining. We'll talk again next week.